Good morning. Come on in. Come on in. Good morning. So good to see you as you come in. Speak to me. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know when you're engaging from. Good to see you. God bless you. Those of you all who are on Facebook, thank you for sharing. Thank you for tagging. Those of you all who are on YouTube, you can do that as well. You can take that link and share it out. Let someone know that we are on this morning, and I'm glad and grateful. All right. Good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Speak to me as you come in. If you're new here, I'm Pastor Sean Marshall. I am husband to Veronica, father to Sage, Olivia, and I'm the author of a book uh, that I wrote a few years ago called Transition Decisions, How to Get Unstuck, Embrace Change, and Make Your Next Move Now. I wrote this book to help people take steps, to help them move forward, because I realize sometimes we get stuck. And uh, my assignment is to help people get unstuck. It's to help move them forward, to be who God created them to be, do what God created them to do, live the life that God created them to live. I found a movement, Manifest Network, to help people walk in their identity, purpose, calling, and destiny. And so I have a mandate from God to help you to move forward and to do all that God has given you to do. And I believe that 2024 is a unique moment, a unique year for you to make your next move now. If you're not following me, follow me on YouTube at Your Next Move Now, and uh, you can get content like this all of the time. So I want to pick up this morning and um, talk about the first of five principles. We're going to be doing this every morning for the rest of the week. And um, actually on Saturday, um, Saturday at 10 a.m., we're going to close this out. I'm going to offer another um, free uh, virtual workshop. I'm going to offer another virtual workshop. And uh, that's going to be on Saturday. It's going to be on Saturday, uh, the 17th. Saturday, the 17th. Okay. And you can register for that Saturday, this Saturday, the 17th. I want you to register for that workshop because we're going to go deeper and uh, talking a little bit more about this, um, about how you can start, how you can get going, uh, how you can make some moves that help you to do what God is giving you to do uh, in 2024. All right, let's get into this. So we're talking today about five principles to help you move forward. And the background text that I'm going to be using is Zechariah chapter 4, verses 1 through 10. And it reads, um, I'm, I'm just going to read actually verses, um, I'm pick up at verse 6. So just be aware, we're in verses 1 through 10, but I'm going to read verses 6 through 10. And this is Zechariah, the prophet, talking. And uh, he's describing an encounter that he's having with the angel of the Lord who shakes him, wakes him up, say, get up, boy, I got something to say. <laughs> and he says, I want you to hear this. Verse six, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, saying, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. What are you, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? You will become a plain and he will bring forth the top stone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Also, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, and his hands will finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? But these seven will be glad when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord, which range to and fro throughout the earth." So today's principle is the principle of small things, small things. That verse 10 may read a little bit differently in a transition translation that you read. Um, it may read, despise not the day of small beginnings for the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. 
Um, it's important to recognize a few, a little bit more context about this text. When the angel of the Lord speaks to Zechariah about Zerubbabel, Zerubbabel was the administrative leader who was overseeing the rebuilding of the temple. The people, uh, Jewish people have been under Babylonian captivity. And when Cyrus the Great, who led the Persian empire, defeated Babylon, he released them to return to Judah and rebuild the temple. So Zerubbabel was one of the administrators who had a civic responsibility to oversee this rebuild. Um, however, that rebuild struggled and it delayed because of opposition, because of resource issues. And a matter of fact, this project was delayed about 18 years. And so by the time uh, we come to about, about that 18th year is when Zechariah and another prophet, Haggai, began their prophetic ministry to encourage the people and to encourage Zerubbabel to let them know that despite the delays, despite the disappointments, and despite the disruptions, God was not done. It's very important when you're experiencing delays and disruptions in the things that God has revealed to you, the things that God has said to you, it's very important for you to access a prophetic perspective because delays and disruptions and disappointments especially those that carry over time, can make you think, well, I've been waiting for so long, maybe I should just get up and go do something else. It's really important to hear what heaven has to say about that. See, we think that because we've been waiting for a long time and because we've been dealing with delays and setbacks and issues and regret, that the length of time that we've been waiting means that God has maybe moved on, changed his mind, right? So we get intimidated by the passing of time and we think that time actually is a factor for God, but God is not bound by time. God existed before time. The Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The text doesn't say Genesis one and one does not read in the beginning, God began because God began the beginning. So if God began the beginning, that means that God was there before the beginning began. And if he was there before the beginning began, he doesn't need the end either. He'll be there after the end. And so God is not bound by the passing of time. So their, their prophetic ministry, Zechariah's prophetic ministry, is to encourage Zerubbabel and the Jewish people to let them know God's not done with you. Y'all, God's not done with you. I don't care how long you've been waiting. I don't care how long you've been delayed. I don't care if you say, I've started this book seven years ago, ain't finished. I started this, wrote this business plan in 2010, and here it is, 2024. And mama done went home to be with the Lord, and I didn't start the business, I didn't do this. It, it, none of that matters. God is not limited by the passing of time. Okay? The other thing that's happening in this text is that Zechariah is commanded to tell Zerubbabel, it's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. He has this vision of this, these lampstands with gold bowls and, and the olive trees that stand by them, which symbolize the anointing and the flow of the oil of God, right? And the, the flow of the oil is what supplies the grace. It's what makes the thing run smoother. It's what makes what felt heavy lighter. It's the thing that fuels you to be able to move and lift heavy weights. So Zerubbabel and the people are being encouraged to know you may feel like you don't have the resources that you need or the help that you need or the support that you need, but you need to understand that oil from heaven is flowing right now. And if you feel like you don't have enough money and you feel like you don't have enough help and you feel like you don't have enough support, good, because you've got limits. That means you've got limits. And when you run into your limits doing the thing that God gave you to do, that is the exact moment that you find out how unlimited God is. So it's fine to embrace your limits. It's fine to say, guess what? I don't have enough money. Yes, I might not have enough money. I might not have this team. I might not have the support. I might not have the strategies. I might not have the wisdom, but I got God. 
And if I got God, if I don't have it in my own strength, and if we don't have it in our collective strength, then thanks be to God for the strength of the Lord. And the strength of the Lord will do this. That's the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel, right? So they've been dealing with the passing of time this long time. Now the Lord is encouraging. He's encouraging them because he's speaking even after 18 years, even after generations under Babylonian captivity, God, even after the delays and the disappointments and the disruptions, it doesn't matter. The length of time does not negate the fact that the Lord is still speaking. Their regret, their discouragement, it does not cancel the fact that the Lord is still saying, I'm with you, I got you. This is going to come to pass. So God is speaking despite the length and God is speaking despite the limits. He's promising my power is going to do this even when you feel weak. And then he says, who despises the day of small things? Watch this. It's really important when you are trying to start. It's really important not to allow yourself to get discouraged by your own vision of success. It's really important for you not to allow your own idea of success to discourage you. Sometimes we have to be real careful about how we measure success, okay? Because if we measure success in big metrics, how many people came, how much money I have, how many products I sold, how many clients I have. If we only measure our forward movement in the big things, we'll get discouraged pretty quickly. We'll feel defeated pretty quickly. And sometimes our faithfulness to the actions that produce fruitfulness are undermined by our fallen definitions of success. So there's a book called The Four Disciplines of Execution. It's a great book on leadership. And one of the things it talks about is the difference between lag measures and lead measures. A lead measure is a metric tied to the outcome, right? So an example of a lead measure, I'm gonna lose 100 pounds at the, at, at the end, by the end of the year, right? The problem that the book argues is that we talk about lead measures, but we don't talk enough about lag measures. Lag measures are the actions that we take every day that predict and produce the lead measures. So the reason why we get discouraged when it's March and we haven't lost any weight and it's April and we haven't lost any weight and it's June and we haven't lost any weight is because we spend all our time focusing on the outcomes and not the process. The lag measures are the process. The lag measures are, I'm gonna drink 10 glasses of water every day. I'm gonna reduce my sugar intake. I'm gonna spend 30 minutes in the gym. I'm gonna walk in the morning and walk at night because those are the things that will actually produce the outcomes. Y'all, it's the small things that make the big things. The text says that these seven will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. What does that mean? The plumb line, that meant that we rejoice when the work begins. When you actually put your hand, it's symbolic of Zerubbabel, putting his hand practically to doing something. So watch this, the world gets excited when your book makes the bestseller list, but heaven gets excited when they look at you and go, they wrote the first page. The world gets excited when you made a billion dollars in sales, but heaven rejoices. The perspective of heaven is we rejoice when you sell the first pie. Look at they bake the first pie. It is faithfulness to the small things that produce fruitfulness over time. So the Bible asks the rhetorical question, who despises the day of the small things? 
Only people who fail to have the perspective of heaven because the big things are made by the small things. So if you want to start, you have to make the deliberate decision to be faithful to things that seem little, insignificant, mundane. You have to decide that you're gonna take your focus off of being at the very end of the thing and ask yourself, what are the simple, practical things you're going to commit to doing every day faithfully until you see God multiply your efforts by the power of his spirit? That's it. First principle, lay your hands to the small things. Be faithful. God does not call you to be successful. He calls you to be faithful because when you are faithful, you become fruitful. And it is in your fruitfulness that God demonstrates good success in your life. Father, I thank you for your people today. I pray, God, that you would encourage their hearts to be faithful in the small things. Let us not be discouraged by our own limited definitions of success, but let us focus on laying our hands on the simple, practical things that we can faithfully do every day to start. Thank you, God, for the small things. May we do those small things and give them to you as an offering, because we know that little becomes much when we place it in your hands. So do big things with our small things in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're not subscribed to me, follow me at YouTube, your next move now. We'll be right back here tomorrow at 7 a.m. to do this all over again. Also, don't forget, check out my website. We're going to close the week out with a virtual workshop this Saturday, all right? 17th at 10 a.m. CST. It's a free workshop. You can register on my site so that you can get the information and become a part. God bless you all. Have an amazing day. Don't despise the small things. Be faithful and watch God work.